Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Oh, we've got another fun one for you today. We've got some floating call to action modules here. When you hover over, they're going to stop floating and people can read them and click the button if they want to. Really easy to do. We've got to do a bit of coding for this today. Don't let that put you off. Any code that I write, I'll put down below the video. You're welcome to copy and paste it as you need. We recently did this with some images. Somebody asked if we could do it with call to actions. You can do this with any module that you want. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is enable the visual builder. And let's go down. I'll add a new section and we'll start from scratch. I'm going to use a regular section. I'm going to put three columns in. And I'm just going to use a simple call to action. Just roll on down so we can see what's going on. Obviously put your title in here. Put what you want your button to say right here. You may have noticed there's no button or you may not have noticed because you can't see it. That'll only turn up when we put a link in. Put your text down here, whatever it is you want to say. And of course you can bold, italicize, make headings if you want to, add media and bullet lists if you need to. I'm going to leave mine just like that. If we pop down below, we've got a little link here. Once I put a button link in, you should see the button turn up there. I've just put a hashtag in in place of a URL and there's our little button right there. I'm just going to change the background color. Let's make it almost black. There we go. That's all I'm going to do to mine. I'm going to leave it just like that. Now I'm going to copy it twice. So roll over it, dark tab for a module, hit the two little squares once, twice. Grab the little handle, left click and hold, drag it to where you want to put it, release. And the same with the next one, doesn't matter which one we take, they're all identical. Great, well we've got our three little modules there. I'm actually going to go and give them a class name now so we can actually animate them. So I'm going to go into the first one again, over to the advanced to CSS IDs and classes. I'm going to give it a class name, not an ID, we're going to use a class name for this. And I'm going to call it float. CTA for float call to action. I'm going to call this first one one. I'm going to copy that. Control C to copy. I'm going to go into the next one. Over to advance custom CSS IDs and classes. In the CSS class, I'm going to paste that. I'm going to change this to a two. That way we can have separate targets for each of these. I'm going to do the same for the third one advanced CSS IDs and classes. Paste that in there, control V. And I'm going to change that to a three. I'm sure you guessed that. Okay, well, let's save that. Let's save our changes now. And exit the visual builder. Okay, that's our old ones. If I roll down, there's our new ones. They're pretty static right there, which is great. But I want them to float as if they're on water, a little bit like our top ones up here. Like it's sort of got a bit of a wave under it. And they're all sort of scaling at different values there, different timings. Okay, to do this today, I'm going to use my theme customizer. You could write this code in a code module and put it on the page, but it would only affect what's on this page. So let's go to our customizer. I've got mine open for anybody that doesn't know. Go down to your dashboard. Once at the dashboard, go down to Appearance and Customize. That's going to take us to this page here. I'm going to go down to my home page settings. I'm going to temporarily make the page we were working on my home page so you can see what's going on. You don't need to do this. It was called Thurs, I believe. And let's publish. And we can go back, a little arrow there to go back. And we're going to be working in the additional CSS panel today. Great. Well, let's give it a title. I'm just going to move what I've got there down. Title is forward slash star star forward slash. 
in between the stars we can write anything you want it won't be read as code so I'm going to say floating CTA it's fine great well we gave it that class name all class names have to be have a dot or a period in front of them so there's the dot and I can paste that class name float CTA one remember this is just for this one that's two and three there Let's open and close some curly brackets and we'll tell it what we want it to do. Well, I want it to animate, so I'm going to say animation, colon. Then I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it FLCTA1. That's the name of our animation. I want it, this first one here to run for five seconds. And I want it to keep going and going, so I'm going to make it infinite. Great. We'll put a little semicolon there. Now we have to actually create this animation. So I'm going to drop down just below my closing curly bracket there. We're using keyframes for this today. So I'm going to put an at sign and the word keyframes. Then the name that we gave our animation above, which is FLCTA1. I'm going to post that in there. Then we can open and close some more curly brackets and decide what we want to do with it. Well, at 0%, or when our page loads, the second one of our five seconds, so I'm going to say 0%, and we can open and close some more curly brackets. I want it to start off at regular scale. So I'm going to say transform scale. Scale. Right at the end of the E of scale, we're going to put some round brackets. I want it to start off at its normal size, which is one scale wise. And I'm going to copy this a couple of times. We've been doing a lot of animations lately, so if you've seen any of those, you probably know what I'm going to do next. I've copied it twice there. Second one, I'm going to put to 50%. Third one, I'm going to put to 100%. Now, nothing's happening at the moment because they're all it's all telling it to stay normal size. If you want to make it smaller, make it like 0.5. If you want to make it bigger, 1.1, 1.2, etc. So I'm going to start this off by having it 10% bigger in the middle of our five seconds there. So it's going to stay, take five seconds, start off normal, go to 10% bigger and end up normal. And as you can see, it's started to float there or pulsate. It's actually just growing a little bit. Now I could give this class to all of these and they'd all do that exact same thing. But it's a much nicer effect if we have them doing it at different times so it really does look like it's on water or it's actually floating or something to do that i'm going to copy all of this code from the dot of our class name up here to the ending curly bracket there Control c i'm going to drop down i'm going to paste it once drop down again i'm going to paste it twice this one i'm going to change to a two our class name up here And I'll also change the animation name to a two. Have to do it in both places. And yep, you guessed it. We're gonna change this one to a three. And this one to a three. And this one to a three. Now they'll all be doing the same thing. They look like they're doing it at different rates. It's purely because the timing I put this, if I was to refresh that page, they'd all be going at the same rate. But I do want to change them so there are slightly different rates. So the second one, I'm going to speed it up a bit. I'm going to make it four seconds. And the third one, let's slow it down a bit, make it seven seconds. And I'm doing this on the animation timing here. So we've got one running for seven seconds. We've got one running for four seconds and we've got one running for five seconds. So they should float independently, a bit like they look like they're doing now. When you're ready, hit your publish. And let's go back to our page. If I refresh this page, there's our static images. They should start to float. And it's not those ones. If I roll down, it's our ones on the bottom here. And there we go. As you can see, they're all sort of floating at a different timing. And that's a great little eye-catching effect to have on your site. 
Like I say, we've done this with the images. You can apply this class name to any module you want and it will start floating. Just to demonstrate, if I was to go up to this gallery above and apply one of our class names to it, let's enable our visual builder. Once enabled, let's roll down and I can apply it to this gallery. Simply go in there, advanced, custom CSS and IDs. It's a class name. I'll put that first one in. And as you can see, we've got our gallery doing the same thing. It's almost like our site's breathing there. That's a little too much for me, but it's just an example. Of course, you could do it with anything you want. We'll put it in this text mask here. Advanced CSS IDs and classes. And there we have it. We've got our little parallax text mask <laughs> scaling up and down over that image behind. That's quite a nice effect, actually. That's a little bit too much for me today, so I'm just going to exit and not save anything. But it just shows you that you can add this class to anything you want, and it'll affect it. When I go back, we should just have the black CTAs or the dark CTAs doing their thing. There we go. That's a bit better. So there you go, guys. There's how to create floating call to action modules using a little bit of CSS. And don't forget that code will be down below the video for anybody that wants to copy and paste. If you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a demo video. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.